channel. Today I am going to solve an analysis of axisymmetric element. This element is a special feature of ANSYS wherein we can analyze something which is called as a pressure vessel. I am going to solve for spherical pressure vessel. A uh, spherical word means in the form of a sphere. Now let's just see some phenomena of spherical vessels. This type of vessel is preferred for storage of high pressure liquids. The sphere is a very strong structure. By geometry, the sphere is strong enough as compared to a cylinder or a rectangular structure. There is even distribution of pressure inside the sphere which is containing a liquid or a gas. So the pressure outside will also be equally distributed over the cylinder because of which there will be no weak points on that body. But when you talk about a rectangle or a cylinder, what happens is it has many edges as well. So there will be more weak points on that body. And one more point with which we need to know is that spherical pressure vessels are much more costly to manufacture as compared to the cylindrical pressure vessels. So this is how a spherical boiler looks like. A boiler is a pressure vessel. Uh, the spherical boiler is of chemicals which it stores. You can also have oil stored in a vessel. So what happens is in a pressure vessel when the temperature increases, there can be formation of gases from liquid state which can exert more pressure on the wall. Now there is some advantage of using spherical storage vessels. The first one is that it has a smaller surface area per unit volume as compared to the other shapes of the vessel. Now I have written the formula here for you to understand. It will be very simple if you use the formula for understanding. The ratio of surface area to volume is given as 4 pi r square. This is the surface area of a sphere and the volume of a sphere is given as 4 by 3 pi r cube. When you cancel out the common term, what remains is 3 by r. r is the radius of the sphere. Now when I look for the formula of a cylinder, the formula is 2 into r plus h. r is the radius of the cylinder and h is the height of the cylinder divided by volume which is r into h. So if you see these two formula, uh, if I assume that the radius for the sphere is 1, then this ratio will be 3 by 1 which is 3. For the cylinder, if I assume the radius is 1 and the height is say 3 meters, then in that case the ratio will turn out to be 2.67. Now with this ratio you can understand very simply that the heat transferred from the surrounding into the vessel or into the liquid will be much lesser in the spherical vessel as compared to the rectangular or cylindrical storage vessels. So spherical vessels are something which are preferred but because of the cost and also because manufacturing a sphere is a bit tedious hence there are more of cylindrical or rectangular storage vessels. So I am going to solve an analysis of a pressure vessel using this axisymmetric element. So let's get started with answers now. This is my screen of ANSYS. I'll go to static structural. I'll rename the project as axisymmetric element. Now, why am I using this axisymmetric element for analyzing a pressure vessel? The reason is axisymmetric element is a special feature wherein I am going to make the geometry in 2D. But when I am doing the analysis part, I can see the results in 3D. The boundary conditions are also applied in 2D form. Suppose if I make a 3D pressure vessel, then what happens is imposing the boundary conditions will be difficult because inside a solid, it is not possible to apply boundary conditions. Hence, the use of this axisymmetric element wherein we apply the boundary conditions in 2D form and watch the results in 3D form. So let's get started. I need to convert this project in 2D form. I'll go to view properties. The property dialog box is generally open but if it is not present then you can just bring it from view. Now your analysis type can be changed to 2D. I'll go to geometry, right click, new design modular geometry. I'll go to unit, millimeter, XY, Look at. I'll make a geometry or a sketch for the pressure vessel. I'll go to sketching. I'll first draw two circles. Then I'll draw a line. Another one. And one bounding line. And one line here. Then I'll use the option of modify, trim. 
I will remove the extra lines. So this is one sketch which I have made. I'll give it some dimensions. So these are the dimensions that I have given as you have seen the outer radius I have taken as 200 the inner radius I have taken as 180 this height V4 over here which is the neck of the pressure vessel I have taken as 80 this dimension is 15 uh, the distance between this line to this point is 20 mm this gap over here is going to be the gap of the pressure vessel so if needed I can just make it to 10 so that will make it a little smaller so these are the dimensions that I have taken next I will go to concept surface from sketches I will choose my sketch 1 apply and generate so this is my simple geometry of pressure vessel which I have made you can see it is made in 2D next I will go to model and double click this is my screen of model I'll leave it to structural steel. I'm not changing the material. If you have some other material in mind or some problem to solve, you can change the material. Now, there is one option which I want to use. If I click on model A4, I will have to use option of symmetry. Now, before going to this option of symmetry, there is one more option which needs to be opened. That is, I'll go to two options. For options, I'll go to appearance. In appearance, there is an option which is called as beta option, which you can see here. I'll just tick this option and I'll say OK. This beta option has to be opened or it has to be highlighted. Only then you will be able to access accessibility element properly. Now I'll just go to model again. Now I'll go to symmetry. In symmetry, I'll change the type from Cartesian to 2D accessibility. Now here you can see the number of repetitions are given as 37. I'll leave it to what it is. I'll go to mesh, sizing. I'll change course to find update. You can see over here, this is what accessymmetric element is all about. You will get an appearance of 3D, but if you go to the geometry, it is still a 2D body. In symmetry, if I change this repetitions to 10 and I check the mesh, I can see a part of the body. If I want to see the half body, I'll have to click 18. You can see half the body is visible here. This is how accessymmetric element becomes very useful when you want to see a part of the geometry which is being analyzed or half the body which is being analyzed or the complete body under analysis can be seen. So I'll leave this value to 37. Now just make sure it is 37. If I enter 36, a part of the geometry will remain open. So I have to leave it to 37 only. Next I'll go to analysis settings. In the pressure vessel, this inner edge is subjected to pressure. So I'll apply pressure here. I'll apply 0.02 megapascal. This edge has some force applied to it. So I'll apply force in component form. I'll apply the force as 100 in downward direction. So this is the force which is used to keep this vessel in place. Otherwise, because of the excessive internal pressure, this pressure vessel will explode and open. 
so the top portion is closed so that the pressure internally is balanced out by this force i will also have to apply a fixed here so on this edge i'll apply fixed support i'll go to solution i want to see the stress in the body i want to see the strain and very important the directional deformation along the y axis what is the deformation i want to see solve now i can see the equivalent stress on the body this is the equivalent strain and this is the deformation which has been obtained on the body i can obtain the max and minimum value if you want you can see the animation here i can see half the body in animation this is very easy to apply the boundary conditions and also to see the result this is my elastic strain and this is a deformation so this is how you solve an analysis of pressure vessel using axis symmetric element the use of axis symmetric element makes the analysis very simple which will otherwise be impossible to do because in a 3d object you cannot insert boundary conditions so i hope you have understood the numerical If you have any doubt do let me know in the comment section like and share my videos all the new people on my channel please subscribe to the channel your support is very important to keep the channel growing i'll see you in the next session with another numerical thank you